when they say it's a spending problem, they are right that there is a problem related to spending in some way. However, it is not what they want you to think that it is. It's not a problem of directly spending too much, so much as it's a totally backward set of priorities as well as a tendency to shoot ourselves in the foot. First, let's start with the obvious stuff. Military spending can be cut by quite a bit. We're not the world police force and we should stop doing that. We could probably cut that in half and be just fine, not to mention all the money we can save by getting out of Iraq and Afghanistan. Programs for the poor and education really need more spending, though. That is simply because you don't get much of a return if you don't make much of an investment. Science is something else that needs more spending. The technology developed from various research programs leads to a lot of revenue. Technology is very valuable and can help with jobs and the trade deficit as well. The big underlying problem of so many things is poverty. Let's not even look at the typical compassion side of this. Let's just look at it from a spending point of view. Poor people have a greater incidence of cognitive deficiencies. One reason for that is that poor nutrition is associated with these cognitive problems in children. So if they are not getting some sort of assistance with food, they may be less intelligent. This leads to working a low-wage job, which keeps one poor. Despite that, many of them are perfectly smart and capable. However, due to lack of funding, their education is very bad. So, if they went to school in their own neighborhood, they are likely quite uneducated. But, even if they did get sent to live with other relatives so they could get a decent education, they don't have enough money for college, so the vast majority are stuck with these low-paying jobs so they have very little chance of ever escaping the trap of poverty. The conditions of poverty, as well as the hopelessness one feels being trapped there, lead to a feeling of desperation. These people live precariously with problems around every corner. Any unexpected expense can lead to major problems. They end up with high interest payday loans because they can't afford to fix the car, if the car doesn't run, they can't get to work. If they don't work, they don't have money for rent. Or instead, maybe they don't pay the electric bill. If that gets shut off, there is a large fee to get it turned on again. Those are just a couple of examples. There are lots of other issues people face that leads to this feeling of desperation. Much more than I can get into here. When people are desperate, they may turn to crime. That has a lot of costs in terms of law enforcement and prisons. It's very expensive to house prisoners. It requires specialized facilities. The tough sentencing that has become more prevalent just makes those costs go up, too. Then, of course, there is the drug war. Not only does the war itself cost money, but it's like throwing gas on a fire. The black market it creates translates into huge profits for drug dealers. That is quite a tempting idea for a desperate person living in hopeless poverty. They may see that as their only chance to have a life worth living. The big money that comes with it is very alluring. In fact, it's too alluring. People are willing to fight over it. So now you have manufactured the desperate population and a black market for them to turn to, so of course they get guns and shoot each other over it, so, now you have not only the massive prison population of nonviolent offenders serving long mandatory sentences for drugs, you also have kids shooting each other in the streets of the inner cities. So, this continues to escalate and cost more and more. The answer is always more law enforcement, more prisons, and longer sentences. Between 1982 and 2006, the expenditure for police, judicial and corrections has gone up 420 percent, 503 percent, and 660 percent respectively. This is expected to continue as medical costs for inmates go up by 10 percent per year on average. We have about 2.3 million people incarcerated with the rate increasing rapidly. It's gone up nearly 500 percent over the last 30 years. Then we get to medical. 
poor people don't get preventative care. They just go to the emergency room when they have a major problem. They can't pay for their care, so this results in rising medical costs. All the billions of dollars in insurance company profits can also be added to medical costs. This affects the economy by taking money from the consumer base, kind of like a tax. It's not that higher prices are the problem, so much as artificially increased prices caused by other underlying issues. Moving on from poverty, we have Homeland Security. That is pretty useless. Basically, we are spending our tax dollars to take away our own civil liberties. There is also the TSA, which is quite a big waste of money and liberty, too. This brings us back around to the military spending again. Terrorism is a big hidden cost to our foreign policy, so again, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Campaign finance problems lead to the best government money can buy, and that certainly costs us in the favors needed to pay that back. Then there are farm subsidies. A lot of that goes to big agribusiness these days. Foreign aid can definitely be cut as well. There are plenty of things you can cut. When people say there is a spending problem, they are rarely talking about any of that, though. They always cite things like welfare, which make up a tiny little piece of the budget. Or they just generally say spending must be cut. Yet they can give no example of a large chunk of the budget that can be cut. They say that's what the problem is. You would think if there was that much spending, they would be able to name some specifics. The best they can do is talk about people abusing social programs. So in the end, it's just another bullshit platitude. Everything in this video and the previous one boil down to two big underlying systemic problems, greed and stupidity. We have an overwhelming abundance of both of these things, and it's getting worse. It also doesn't help that a lot of people tend to be vindictive and full of shit. But, hey, that's America for you.